In today's episode, we have a couple of animals that continue to live long after their deaths. You'll understand why bees are often also called busy bees, and then you'll wish humans could become like salamanders. Lastly, you'll understand why we have so many flatworms around us. Crocodile Crocodiles are one of the scariest creatures alive. At the sight of these animals, one should simply run and hope it doesn't chase after you. Even after their death, though, they're still dangerous. For instance, the creature does appear to be dead when the temperature is freezing cold. However, they continue to breathe through a unique and never seen before trick. This state of living is called brumation. During this period, the crocodile's metabolism slows down, and this means that it can live without food for several months. They only stick their snouts out of the water to breathe while the other part of their body remains in the water. While it is easy to take advantage of them in that state, doing so may not be wise. Also, crocs don't feel the effects of old age as much as other animals do. One famous crocodile that has lived for so long is Jonathan, and he's believed to be over 200 years. Regardless, they lose their youthful strength and teeth, and also develop some health conditions associated with age. Bacterium The bacterium is an immortal animal that regains its life after death. Their body has a strange quality that helps it repair its own DNA. Scientists say that these creatures can survive extreme conditions like acid, dehydration, cold, and many other phenomena that would have killed other animals. This particular persistence allows them to live for thousands of years. Scientists have embarked on thorough research on whether microbial life exists on Mars, and if it does, that would be a good one for the continent. The chances that life exists there would be high, and after all, some animals survive even in worse situations. Microorganisms like fungi and bacteria live in the cryosphere, where the conditions are inhospitable. They can even stick around ice for thousands of years, and this survival is made possible because this creature can tolerate crazy weather until they're favorable. Bees. You're probably not friends with bees because they're a thorn in the flesh of humans, literally. But there's a reason they feature on this list. Even when dead, a bee still stings. Its modus operandi at death differs from the one that we're used to, and obviously they can't fly around to sting you, but their stinging parts remain active after death. If you look under the belly, you'll find the needle-like protrusion that is the stinger, and it's present only in females. Therefore, if you're stung by a bee, you know who the culprit is. The venom is still very active, and the venom delivery system is also dynamic. When a bee stings a victim, the sting detaches from its body while the cells are embedded in the victim's skin. The organ still pumps the venom because the actual method is not controlled by the bee's brain, but rather by involuntary impulses. The Salamander There's really no way that we couldn't mention the salamander. It's one of those animals that holds on dearly to life amid opposition no matter what. This animal has since been associated with immortality, and people who believe in magic revere the creature so much that this ability is considered paranormal. Salamanders can actually regrow the body part that's chopped off if it does happen to come off. This skill is accredited to a special protein found in salamanders, which facilitates the replication of cells. While it is found in humans, it exists in a very minute quality. This basically just means that we can heal our wounds if they're minor, but if we get our own arm cut off, well, there's no coming back on that one. Cockroaches Cockroaches are infamous for their tenacity and the will to hold on to life under even more dire circumstances. In fact, a cockroach can live for weeks without its head. One then wonders how they survive decapitation. Well, first, their bodies aren't wired like that of a human, meaning that while humans may bleed when their head is caught off, a cockroach would not. They boast more of an open circulatory system that ensures they have little or no blood pressure. When their head is chopped off, the wound closes naturally. After that, they're also able to breathe through their skin and not through their mouths, so again, decapitation isn't exactly a big deal. Granted, though, they will die soon afterward because of starvation. Octopus An octopus is one animal that lives a tricky life. You've seen videos of this animal still moving its legs after they've been chopped up, and you might get curious to know how they could pull off such a stunt. It might seem creepy, but it's also considered quite deadly in some Asian countries. It's kind of taboo to eat them like that. This animal's eight arms often get stuck in one's throat, resulting in a bad day that could possibly lead to death. The reason it continues to move after being chopped off is pretty exciting, though. The creature's central nervous system is not located in the brain, where most animals have theirs, but instead it's located in their tentacles. These arms still take time to react to stimuli even after they're no longer connected to the brain. In fact, they remain responsive long after the octopus is dead and the arm severed. 
Scientists who were experimenting with this actually confirmed that an octopus's tentacles will start to move after death, reaching for things like food and try to bring it to the mouth. Creepy, and I don't think I'm gonna eat it. Chickens. I'm sure you've heard of that old adage, running around like a chicken with its head cut off. But despite its head being chopped off, it's still pretty good going there. Chickens are blessed with the special gift of running around for long even after their head is gone, and this is because the brain does not control this animal's central nervous system, but by the certain parts of the brain's stem. This means that if a butcher chops a chicken's head too high, only the forebrain goes off with the head. The cerebellum and the brain stems are completely intact. The butcher may also miss out on the jugular, thus empowering the animal to live long after death. It just continues to move and breathe and wander around aimlessly. The animal would eventually die of starvation, though, since it can't eat this entire time. Flies. Flies make this list because they can survive freezing temps and go into a hibernation mode. They then rise up when it's all said and done, just as good as new. This amazing ability to survive freezing temperature qualifies it to make this list. Females live for several days after decapitation as well, and they also engage in reflex actions like walking and flying without their head. Even if it's decapitated, the fly can still go on living for one month and even actually still mate and produce offspring. Frogs. You remove a frog's head, it may likely not die, but move around helplessly until it gives up. It sounds sort of similar to the fly situation, but the difference is the frog can still live without its brain, and yeah, I didn't stutter with that. What happens if you do remove the frog's brain? Would it die, remain motionless till it dies? Well, one David Fieriel, a neurologist, researched the subject. He concluded that there's practically no difference between a normal frog and a brainless one. Both animals act and respond to stimuli in the exact same way. The frog also has a different way of kind of cheating death. It's able to also go into a bit of hibernation. While its entire body and internal organs may freeze come summertime, it will simply defrost and just go about as if nothing had happened. Now it's time for the day's best pick. You're a lover of animals, you probably can't help watching them die without offering help. But you should reconsider your stance after looking at number three, camels. Generally, camels are pretty friendly towards humans when they're alive. Camels are useful for a lot of our daily activities, at least where they're plentiful. Of course, though, like everybody else, they're susceptible to death. And of course, the most common version is thirst. Generally, camels thrive in the desert, and water isn't exactly easy to find there. So when it doesn't come in time, this animal is probably gonna go. Now, your first instinct to seeing your own camel die would probably be to go up to it and simply cradle it and, you know, mourn it. But you probably shouldn't try that. The reason why is because it could quite literally explode in your face. Camels have large amounts of fat in their humps, and when they die, these huge deposits remain there and can't metabolize. Therefore, it instead turns into a gas like methane. Also, the water in the stomach remains there while the microorganisms remain active. They soon ferment and become quite flammable. When the desert sun acts on it, the chances that the animal would explode are pretty high. Turtles. Fish, reptiles, birds, and mammals have their own pacemaker cells that tick over when the signals of their brainstem are not coming through. This ensures that their hearts function optimally for a while, even when the brain does not. Turtles in particular can dive for a long time, for about 5,000 hours in fact. It survives on the oxygen it takes from the water through its throat and skin. Also, their body amazingly produces energy without oxygen. Their hearts also have their fuel sac that won't give until they use at least one up. While the turtle itself may die, the shell will stay for a pretty long time. While it will slowly decay, the process takes a lot of time. Scientists have devised a means to preserve the shells even last longer, though. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Flatworm. If you're familiar with the famous story of how earthworms reproduce, you probably wouldn't be shocked at what I'm about to say now. Simply put, cut an earthworm in half, both pieces would regrow into full worms. Flatworms are really no different. They are the masters of regeneration. They rebuild any part of their bodies after amputation to a perfect degree. One part is cut, the other half that contains the head regrows a tail, and the tail area regrows another head. This works even when they're cut into multiple pieces. Each of the ten bits become new worms with their organs intact. 
So far, this news has been exploited by scientists who were desperate to confirm it. Several experiments have resulted in a colony of over 20,000 worms that came from simply one worm. See you in another episode.